This week, The Basics has a spring in its step as we take a look at the history of the leader of the Wreckers, the Autobots' own action hero, Springer. The character of Springer was created for 1986's The Transformers The Movie. He was a triple changer, a kind of transformer able to assume two different alternate modes, in his case a futuristic car and helicopter. Springer's toy was designed based on the artwork of the movie's character designer Floro Deary, which was the opposite of how Transformers toys were normally created, with the toy itself usually coming first. However, Derry's design for Springer would undergo further revisions after the toy went into production, meaning that the toy wound up looking somewhat different from Springer's finished appearance in animation. Springer was characterized as a courageous and optimistic Autobot with the powerful build, charm, and dry, cool, bantering wit of an action movie hero, likened by the film's script to Indiana Jones. His name was derived from his ability to leap vast distances using a pogo stick-like springing mechanism in his legs. But this power saw only very, very limited use in media, and he didn't use it at all during his debut in the movie. Springer's showcase scene in the film, also used in the commercial for his toy, put his triple-changing and sword-fighting abilities on display as he battled the Junkion leader Rekgar. But his best-remembered contribution to the movie was a sardonic one-liner delivered during the Battle of Autobot City that would go on to become an iconic quote. I got better things to do tonight than die. After the film, Springer continued to appear semi-regularly in the third season of the Transformers animated series, which established that a romantic relationship had formed between him and fellow movie cast member R.C. Some notable adventures for Springer in the cartoon included teaming up with the Predacon Razorclaw to battle a dragon, and having his mind transferred into a synthetic human body. The path to true humanity, only $4.95, tax deductible. Sorry, pal, I'm a robot at heart. The discontinuation of Springer's toy in 1987 saw him phased out of the cartoon as it neared its end, but he still made a few brief appearances in that year's Japanese-exclusive sequel series, The Headmasters. Springer didn't appear in the Marvel comic book published in America, but this left him open to star in the exclusive stories written for the United Kingdom's version of the series, which, like the toy, based his appearance on Floro Deary's early design. Springer was introduced into the comic as a new member of the Autobot commando unit, the Wreckers. But not long after Springer joined, the Wreckers' leader, Impactor, was killed in action, and Springer became their new commander. Springer's fear that he couldn't live up to Impactor's legacy initially left him struggling to make command decisions, but when renegade Autobot scientist Fleam reanimated Impactor as a zombie, Springer was inspired to overcome his indecision and act to end Fleam's schemes. Springer and the Wreckers later joined forces with the Decepticons' Mayhem attack squad to combat the time-traveling Galvatron but Galvatron wound up killing most of them, leaving Springer to unite the surviving members of both groups to form a new team named the Survivors. Springer and Decepticon member Carnivac didn't see eye to eye with one another, but that didn't stop Springer from fighting to defend Carnivac when the Decepticons came seeking to terminate him for working with Autobots. No further toys of Springer were released in the Generation 1 toy line, but his original figure was made available again in 1991 as part of the Classics line of re-releases sold in Europe and Australasia. And he put in a few appearances in Marvel's Transformers Generation 2 comic in 1994. In the 21st century, there's been a bit of a tendency for Springer to almost but not quite appear in new Transformers projects. For instance, the Autobot Bulkhead from 2004's Transformers Energon was seemingly designed as an homage to Springer, and in the Japanese market he was even named after him. But Bulkhead's characterization as a crazy old coot meant that the two characters had nothing in common besides both being green helicopters. His presence in the Transformers animated cartoon amounted to only a blink-and-you'll-miss-it cameo in 2009, 
while a new version of the character designed for inclusion in that year's live-action movie, Revenge of the Fallen, was cut from the film during production. However, toys of this live-action Springer, who transformed into a V-22 Osprey helicopter, had already been designed, and they wound up being released anyway, leading him to make a few appearances in the tie-in comic published in the UK. Similarly, Springer was designed for, but didn't make it into, the 2012 video game Fall of Cybertron, and instead only showed up in tie-in novels as a member of the Wreckers. Springer's membership in the Wreckers has, in fact, been his defining characteristic throughout what notable appearances he has had in modern media, which have all taken place in comic books. In the early 2000s, Dreamwave Productions comics featured him establishing the Wreckers as their own splinter faction during Cybertron's Dark Ages. 2013's Regeneration 1, a sequel to the Marvel comic, saw Springer and the Wreckers battle Megatron on a post-apocalyptic Earth, only for Springer to die at the hands of the Decepticon leader. In 2014, the Japanese Transformers Legends manga, set within the continuity of the original cartoon, would even see him find a version of the Wreckers in that universe. But Springer's biggest modern role by far has been in IDW Publishing's comics, particularly in the Wreckers trilogy, Last Stand of the Wreckers, Sins of the Wreckers, and Requiem of the Wreckers. These stories revealed that IDW's version of Springer was an artificial life form created in a lab by the mad scientist Tarantulus, and was originally named Osteros, after Ostara, the Anglo-Saxon goddess of spring. Recovered by Autobots Prowl and Impactor and raised with no knowledge of his origins, Springer was trained by the old warrior Cup and later joined the Wreckers, eventually becoming leader of the unit after being forced to turn in Impactor for unlawfully executing Decepticon prisoners. Years later, Springer reunited with a repentant Impactor to battle the deadly Overlord, sustaining injuries that left him in a coma for several years. When Prowl was abducted by a revenge-seeking Tarantulus, Cup managed to awaken Springer to lead a rescue mission, which resulted in the truth about Springer's origins coming out. In his own twisted way, Tarantulus hoped that he could reconcile with the son who had been taken from him, but his efforts ultimately resulted in the deaths of both Impactor and himself. With his father figures dead, Springer, weary of the endless loss of life that he had seen as a wrecker, chose to use Tarantulus' final invention, a time machine, to travel back to before the Transformers War began and live out the rest of his life in the past in the hope that he could change history and create a world where the Wreckers would never be needed. A lack of major roles outside of comic books hasn't kept Springer from receiving several new toys over the years, but they've mostly tended to be recolors of existing figures which weren't triple changers like his original toy was. It wasn't until 2014 that a truly brand new triple changing Springer was released as part of the Transformers Generations toy line. Based directly on Springer's design from IDW's comics, the figures come to be widely considered by fans to be one of the best Transformers toys ever. And that's pretty fitting for a character who's always been presented as a real hero's hero, a bot who, in the original cartoon, the Marvel comic, and the IDW comic, has been identified as a potential candidate to one day carry the matrix of leadership and become Autobot leader. But far be it from Hasbro not to try to improve on perfection. 2019 has seen another new triple-changing Springer released as part of the War for Cybertron Siege toy line. This one based very closely on his design from the original animated series. Whether that means we'll be seeing Springer in Netflix's upcoming War for Cybertron cartoon, we don't yet know. But we can wait to find out. I don't know about you, but it's not like I have anything better to do tonight. And those are the basics on Springer. Spring on down to the comments and share your thoughts on this green machine. Make sure to hit the like button and hit subscribe for more history and lore from the world of the Transformers like this. And if you can, I hope you'll consider visiting Patreon to support the series.